Tonight, we take a look at the party happening down at the grand opening of the on-campus Dutch Bros. How long did you wait in line for that free drink? Ben, how did you think about where your food is coming from? Local members of the Agribusiness Council wants to ask you one question. WTF? And finally, we have our police beat reporter Taylor Rose with us to give us the scoops on what kept the CPD busy with over the week. We will have all that and more for you tonight on the Beaver News. Good evening and welcome to your Tuesday night edition of the Beaver News. I'm Brooke Chrysler. And I'm Conrad Cartmel. We're glad you could join us this evening. Loud music, dancing, and coffee was taken to a whole new level today as the new Dutch Bros has their grand opening of their coffee house across from Gill and Riso Stadium. I went out to the party to see what else was brewing besides the coffee pot. House music, party lights, and long lines of people were just some of the things you could have seen on the intersection of 26th and Washington at the grand opening of the Dutch Bros Coffee House. Today we got our first grand opening of the third official coffee house, Dutch Bros, here in Corvallis, Oregon. We got a great line of people here waiting to get some good drinks and some good people. Students stood in line today for about 30 minutes in order to get their free drink. Kind of like a pick-me-up. I mean, besides the coffee, it's just good atmosphere, good people to come around. I see friends here, we meet here, we can study here. It's a fun place. Dutch Bros means to me as a way of life. It is not a business or a, a job. Dutch Bros is just something that's inspired myself and I feel like most of our crew here in Corvallis to love people and build relationships and look at life a completely different way. Dutch Bros is about more than just their drinks. As far as the success of it, I think it's a great opportunity for uh, special events too because of how close it is with game days. You have Reeser, you have Gill. There's going to be a lot of games going on, a lot of activities. You're close to campus, you're close to the dorms. There's an opportunity to really reach out and have students be a part of something kind of day to day, which is super cool. I think it's going to be high energy and high volume, and I don't think you're, you're going to find a coffee house like this one where the music's turned up, the people are energetic. You walk into a lot of coffee houses and you see kind of a, like a mellow attitude, but to have a coffee house for college students where it's upbeat, it's high energy, you're going to get a great cup of coffee and a great experience on your way to class. I think it's going to be very successful, so I'm excited for them. This 17-hour long party kept the crowd consistent throughout the day and only plans on keeping this vibe going throughout the rest of the year. I like going to Dutch Bros because they got good coffee and uh, actually I think they're really friendly, like they're friendlier than other places I've gone and so the baristas like ask you how your day is and I don't know, so that's kind of fun. <laughs> This has been Brooke Chrysler reporting with the Beaver News. So Conrad, are you a frequent Dutch Bros customer? I can't say that I am, but I do really like their coffee and the uh, neon straws, those are great too. I agree, the coffee's great and I just love the environment. Mm-hmm, really good atmosphere. Yeah. For the Oregon State Glee Club, promoting joy is just a part of the business. But on Saturday, the club stepped into new territory by performing at TEDx Salem. After making the journey north, members put on their renditions of Waiting on the World to Change, and I still haven't found what I'm looking for. The performance included a speech by the director of OSU's Glee Choir, Jim Davidson, who spoke about how singing in an ensemble has the power to change the world. By bringing people together as parts of something greater than any one individual, choir fosters a productive sense of community spirit. For those of you who wish to see the choir in person, their next show will take place this Sunday at the First United Methodist Church. WTF is an acronym we use too often, but for members of Agribusiness Council of Oregon, WTF means something completely different. Today in the Quad, members of the Council were promoting their WTF campaign, Where's the Food Without the Farmer? Organization representatives spoke with students about their favorite foods and efforts to bring attention where the food has come from. Several students wrote their favorite foods on a blackboard at the booth, and by the end of the day, the board was filled with all different kinds of meal choices. The group mission is to bring attention to where our food comes from and who produces it across the globe. 
Next time you're eating that pizza, pasta, or those fruits and vegetables, the agribusiness encourages you to think, where's the food without the farmer? It's always a good time to help th out those who are less fortunate than you, and this week the Center for Civic Engagement is making helping people easy. It's National Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, and as such, there is a campus-wide food drive to help people in need. Donations go to the Jackson Street Youth Center, Community Outreach, and the OSU Food Pantry. If you're in a position to donate, the drive especially needs nutrient-rich, non-perishable foods such as peanut butter, granola bars, and soups. Foods that cater to people with special dietary needs, such as vegetarian and gluten-free options, are also needed, among others. You can drop off at a number of locations around campus, including the library, the MU, Dixon Rec, and Marketplace West. It's the time of year where the flu is going around and people want their flu shots. This Friday, Oregon State University's College of Pharmacy will be in Portland to give out free flu vaccines to adults who do not have health insurance. The Oregon Alliance Working for Antibiotic Resistance Education for Aware in the Square is partnering up with the students in the College of Pharmacy. This event will take place at the Pioneer Courthouse Square beginning at 7 a.m. In previous years, more than 1,000 people have attended. OSU students will not only be giving flu shots, but will be providing information about immunizations, antibiotic use, the difference between viral and bacterial infections, and flu preventions. As we all know, the Civil War game is coming up and the Oregon State Marching Band wants to make sure that regardless of the results of the game, that they always do their best on the field. We take a look at the strenuous practices they endure to make sure they play at the best of their ability. Seven hours a week. That's how much time the OSU Marching Band dedicates week after week to perfecting their craft. With drill charts, symbols, and assigned numbers to keep everyone in their place. From an outsider's point of view, it seems inevitable that students will crash into each other. But these guys don't. They are pros. Some having years of experience, some new to marching band. All show up knowing how to play an instrument and all work together to learn to play OSU style. With about 14 hours of practice for each new routine, the band tries to bring something new to each and every performance. These students are dedicated. Again and again, they go over the movements, in step and in tune. All the while knowing they will do it again at next practice. End result, fantastic formation, excitement from the crowd, and a chance to do it all again at the next game. Our Tuesday night wouldn't be complete without our Police Beat segment, here to tell us what the Corvallis Department were up to over the last week. Thanks, Brooke. First up tonight, Corvallis police responded to an alleged hit and run near the 3000 block of Harrison Boulevard. According to the logs, a witness reported a red compact vehicle drove through a yard and crashed into a parked car. The driver then left, heading northbound at a high speed with a flat tire. While authorities were at the scene, the sus suspect allegedly drove by the area again, where police arrested Kenneth Lusk, 31, for driving under the influence of intoxicants, hit and run, property damage, and criminal mischief too. And lastly, a Corvallis man was cited for careless driving after fishtailing across the Interstate 5 median and causing a four-vehicle crash at about 5 p.m. last night. Southbound lanes were closed for about 15 minutes at Albany because of the wreck, and one driver had minor injuries. Investigators believe that the speed and poor road conditions were contributing factors to Kyler Kelly, 20, crashing his car as he approached the interstate from an on-ramp, according to a news release. He was traveling northbound on the ramp from Knox, Butte Road, when he lost control of his Nissan, went across the medium, and spun out of control. Luckily, all of the people involved in the crash were wearing safety restraints, but all four vehicles did have to be towed from the site. And that's your Tuesday Night Police Beat segment. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. I'm Burt Chrysler. And, and I'm Taylor Rose. And I'm Conrad Cartmel. We're glad you could join us this evening. For more of your Beaver News, make sure to watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter or Instagram at Beaver News. Thanks, and have a good night.